So now, ladies and gentlemen, a very special moment is here. I request you all, please help me to welcome our chief guest, Dr. Aris Sharma, with the loudest round of applause for the special address. <laughs> Sir, we request you, please say a few words for this uh, great initiative. Well, uh, good morning, friends. It's really a very, very important occasion because you have chosen to felicitate, honor the PSUs which have performed so well and, and there's no need to tell you, you are all from that space that public sector undertakings have played an extremely important role in the Indian economy's development. And, and no wonder that you know we have all grown up in our family or relationships, whatever. There have been people who have been working in these organizations and they feel so proud of it. There were times probably when the public sector was much maligned, uh, you know, but, but then I think people have realized that given the freedom, given the operational freedom to the public sector undertakings, they can perform the very best. Let us also understand that the people who joined the public sector undertakings and even now continue to join, they are certainly the brightest of the people in their class. You know, it is not as if, you know, all the bright characters are going to private sector. You, you, all of you must have been the toppers in your, in your class. I have no doubt in that mind because I have seen, I've worked in this, this space for about 45 years now. And, and I feel that we have the brightest minds. Only thing which we need to provide is actually a conducive environment for them to perform, to function. Many times we, you know, while we provide the brightest people, we don't give them the ecosystem, we don't give them the environment, we don't give them the freedom to perform. And then, then you start blaming them. You know, for the first time, you know, you give the persons and then you give them target and then you start restricting them and then you start blaming them. So that's a, that's a game which has been played and I have seen many public undertakings becoming sick, dying, not because of the, of the brilliance of the people who were working there and their slothiness, you know, they did not work, but because they were not allowed to perform. And that has happened. And many times when the private sector fellows come, I mean, I'm not against private sector or public sector per se, but I have seen, I've been in telecom space and I have seen how BSNL, MTNL, how their things have degraded, not because they don't have the best of the people, but again, because of the, you know, many policies, many things, many times the private sector guys come, then they start, you know, sort of impinging on the policy space also, therefore degrading the performance of the public sector undertaking. So first of all, my congratulations to you that uh, some of you are being felicitated today for your great performance. And this is a very good attempt because we must recognize and we must honor our people who have done great work despite all the constraints. Uh, you know, I'm not an expert on the public sector undertaking nor any kind of thing. I'm uh, one of the persons who have worked in the administrative space uh, for quite some time. And one of my areas of interest has been the digital, uh, you know, space, the technology. And uh, I will share my, you know, kind of perspective or my thoughts or my experience, put it this way, uh, with you, uh, because many of my friends, you know, said that hum aap se nahi hoga, and then you know now aap hi kar sakte ho. It is very, very important because today the environment is that we are full of confidence. You know, many years back, maybe just about 10 years back, 15 years back, People used to say, Are bhai, hum kaise karenge, kaise hoga hum se. You know, this is something, when others have failed, you can't expect India to succeed. You know, when we did Aadhaar, in, in 2009, I joined as the, uh, as the CEO of Aadhaar. At that time, everybody said, Ki ye kya? how can you do it? Nobody in the world has done it. Even the UK, which tried doing Aadhaar, couldn't do it. So how can you, you know, operate and how can you create digital identities, unique identities for each person in this country of 1.3 billion? So that's actually a challenge. 
and everybody had trashed it. I don't think there is any project in this country which has been maligned and which has become so demonized as, as Aadhaar. You know, everybody was, you know, from the civil society organizations who were saying that it will violate privacy, from NGOs who were saying that it will create exclusion, from many other fellows who were saying all Bangladeshis will get the Indian citizenship. So all kinds of, you know, things were, were happening and, and people had no trust that we can do it. Today the entire world is talking of digital public infrastructure, digital identity of the country, what India has done and all that. So basically what is required is a you know, courage of your conviction. You know, what you are doing is good and that is what the con we give, should give you the confidence and let others say what they want to say. When the new government, the government of our Prime Minister came in uh, uh, in 2014, I also happened to be the Secretary of uh, Department of Electronics and IT. And we were told just when, you know, the Prime Minister took charge on 26th of May, uh, 2014 and in the month of uh, June itself we were told that the Prime Minister wants to launch what is called Digital India and I'm talking about it because you know you gave the, uh, the, the reference to Digital India. So we collected a number of projects and then you know went to the PMO saying that this is what is Digital India, we will do this, we will do that and then uh, when we presented to the Prime Minister he said this is not what I have in mind. I have in mind a vision. I have in mind what exactly is your last objective? What is your objective? And in a, is a visionary fact. Forget about the money which will which will take, which it will take. Just think how you want a digitally empowered India, digitally empowered society and a knowledge economy. How India can become that? Think of that. What are the attributes required? What are the dimensions required for a country to become digital India? And that is where we framed Digital India. And imagine the 10 years that Digital India has been in operation, how we have digitally leapfrogged in the entire world. The last G20 conference which took place, it talked of digital public infrastructure. How India has taken the leadership in the entire world of creating digital public infrastructure, whether it is identity space, whether it is payment space, whether it is health space, many other areas where we have created this, this model. And this is also, you know, public sector unit. Ultimately, it's a public good which we have delivered, which we have created. And how that public, public infrastructure, infrastructure is something which is used by various sectors and you, you create a road, everybody uses it. So essential idea is how do you create those reusable component you spoke about. Reusable component which can be plugged into all kinds of applications. So in a way, horizontal, you know, horizontally usable components. And that is what India has, has done. So when we started Digital India, it had three broad objectives. One was digital infrastructure as a utility to citizens. You know, we should have connectivity, we should have identity infrastructure, soft infrastructure as also the hard infrastructure. Second was software and services on demand. You develop software which will ride on this digital infrastructure because that's the base. Without digital infrastructure, without connectivity infrastructure, you can't do anything. And third was citizens empowerment. How do you empower the citizens of this, this country? So look at the statistics. In 2014, India had 37% tele-density. Today we have 93% tele-density. India was consuming a few kilobytes or megabytes of data. It was all 2G, 3G. And we had very small number of landlines, of course. I'm out talking of connectivity infrastructure. And uh, very few, you know, 2G, 3G were happening. Today, and I don't want to, I probably don't remember those figures also. Today, and, and somebody mentioned here that the data consumption, we are number one. Today we have 1.16 billion mobile connections. 116 crore mobile connections in our country. We have 65 crore smartphones in our country. 
crore, 650 million. We have about 860 million internet users in this country. We have the you know, cheapest data rates in the whole world today. Just about eight, nine years back, eight years back, 2016, the data rate was 274 rupees per gigabyte. Today the data rate is, can you guess? Seven rupees per gigabyte, seven rupees. You know, if you remember 199 ka jo plan hota hai, usme dead gigabyte per day, aap 28 din tak le sakte ho. To 28 dera, 42, right? Or 42 in 200 rupees, kitna rupiah hua? 7 rupiah. 7 rupees per gigabyte is the data rate. Indians consume 20 gigabytes of data per user per month. 20 gigabytes. In USA, the data rate, and you can check it just now on Google, is about $7 per gigabyte. It is $7 versus 7 rupee. So how much a factor? 80 or 82, whatever that you know, exchange rate is nowadays. So this is the statistics. Today, a laborer from my state, Bihar, Jharkhand, he's in Delhi. He is talking every day to his family, his wife, his children on a video call on WhatsApp. He's not bothered how much money because he knows the data is so cheap. And we have 4G throughout the country, we have 5G. So we have actually leapfrogged. In 2009, the financial inclusion was just about 17%. One in every six Indians had a bank account. Today, 82% of Indian adults have a bank account, 82%. This percentage is comparable to the Nordic countries of Norway, Sweden, all those. It is much better than USA. They may not have any money in their accounts. Right? But, but they still have an account. And that account is now being used to do what is called DBT, direct benefit transfer. Millions of farmers, millions of poor people were transferred money in COVID times. So we have truly leapfrogged and we, you know, and, and imagine creating any system for a country as diverse as ours is really not an easy task. You know, there are some countries, Canada mein do language hain, Angreji or France, French. Usi ke maare pareshan hai wo log. Hamaare yaan 26 hain, yaan 28, jo bhi matla hamaari Samvedhanic roop se recognized languages. We have 1600 dialects. You know, thousands of, you know, hundreds of languages and 1600 whatever dialect or language, whatever you call them. This is, this is the diversity of this country. Yahaan pe jitne illiterates ki sankhya Hindustan mein sabse jyada hai dunia mein. Lekin yahaan PhD ki sankhya bhi sabse jyada hai dunia mein. It's so diverse economically, you know, geographically, whatever sense you look at, you know, ethnic groups, religious groups, there is no religion in this world which is not present in India. The Syrian Christians, they are not there in Europe, but they are in Kerala. So this is the kind of country, and for this to make any system, any software, any digital system is so difficult. And if we have succeeded in making it for India, we have, we will, you know, the whole thing can work anywhere. The digital identity Aadhaar, which is next generation digital identity because it is portable. We don't have any kind of Aadhaar hologram kind of card, nothing. It's just a letter, you can print it. Kho gaya to dubara chap lije. Now that we have done more than 100 billion authentications using Aadhaar. And authentications are done for getting ration, for getting mobile SIM, for opening bank account, for various kinds of things. Because the first thing which any formal system asks you when you approach it, who are you? Prove me that you are who you claim to be. This is, this is so important and therefore digital identity is so important. 
and we, we, we succeeded in creating that identity. We have electronic KYC, we have digital locker, we have digital signatures on demand. Today you file the income tax return. Earlier, if you remember, if you filed the income tax return, you had to print that thing and you know sign it and send it to Bangalore for their central processing center. Today you don't do that. Why? How? Today you don't do it because once you enter your PAN number, your PAN is linked to Aadhaar, your Aadhaar is linked to mobile and you get an OTP on mobile and mobile OTP you plug in and your digital, your, your the, the income tax return gets digitally signed and sent to Bangalore. This is, this is the power of technology which has been put in the hands of the Indians to empower them. To, make, to enable them to perform various kinds of functions. And this is nothing, this is not that, you know, people only educated fellows and only the technology science sound fellows are using it. No. We created COVID. You know, when the, the, the COVID came and nobody, of course, as you said, nobody realized, nobody had even imagined, probably Nostradamus also, I don't know whether the fellow made a prediction or not. But at that time, and when the Prime Minister decided to launch the biggest vaccination drive in this country, we were faced with the problem, how will you ensure accountability? How will you ensure at a poor fellow village, usko co-vaccine laga hai, ki COVID shield laga hai, ki sputnik laga hai, kya laga hai? Or kab laga tha, usko dubara kab lagega, kya uska number hai? Or agar usne ranchi mein pehla lagwa liya and he came for doing, you know, some mazduri in Delhi, Will he have to go back to Ranchi to get a second dose or he can do it in Delhi? So the portability, the scalability, the interoperability, all these things. So when we build software for this country, we have to build it at a scale. We have to build interoperable. We have to build frugal. The digital identity of UK was costing 135 pounds per digital identity. A digital identity of India is costing just 100 rupees or one pound per digital identity. We completed the entire country in 7,000 crores. They could have done it at 7,000 multiplied by 7,000 probably British pounds, 7,000 crore British pounds. This is the, so essentially what has happened is that we have demonstrated to the world that if we have, and, and we don't have to follow them. Believe me, we don't have to follow the Western fellows. Because if we, we would have followed it, followed them, we would have, never have succeeded in doing anything. Today, if you transfer money to your child, if your child is studying somewhere in USA or wherever, if you transfer money on Western Union or many transfer points, how much do you pay? You pay quite a substantial amount. Now today, if I transfer one rupee, to you, Mr. Murthy, on UPI, you get just one rupee. You don't get 99 paisa. How have we been able to do this? The UPI is now, you know, we are clocking more than, I don't know, 100 billion or 100 million or 10 million. How many transactions we clock? It's, it's two, you know, it's about 10 billion transactions per month is what we are clocking. Why? Have we done 82% bank accounts? Can anyone tell? We have done it because earlier, and because I've been doing this business since last about, what, 45 years. You know, I was subdivisional officer in a place called Godda, in, now in Jharkhand, earlier in Bihar. And we used to do a program called IRDP. Any one of you have heard that program? Integrated Rural Development Program. And we used to distribute milch cattle and you know all kinds of assets to the rural poor people. And for that you required some subsidy. Government used to give some subsidy. And for that you required to have a bank account. And we used to pester the banks, bhaiya bank account kholo. He will never do it. He said, saab kya kholen? Ye jis din kholenge, us din paisa aayega. Dusre din paisa nikal jayega. Humko account kholne mein saw rupya lagega. Ye saw rupya to kabhi jamai nahi karega. So the whole thing is unviable from the beginning itself. Now why did the bankers open the bank account now? Because the cost of opening bank account has come to zero. Electronic KYC empowered by Aadhaar. You can open a bank account sitting at home. 
एंड देयर फॉर एवरी बैंकर इज पचास रुपया भी रहेगा तो कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता पचास रुपया तो फोकट का है फ्लोट बढ़ेगा मेरा एक रुपया मैंने अकाउंट खोल दिया उसके बाद तो एनी थिंग विच इज पॉजिटिव सो देयर फॉर पीपल ओपन बैंक अकाउंट वी ओपन जनधन आधार एंड मोबाइल द सेम जैम ट्रिनिटी जनधन स्टैंड फॉर द अकाउंट फाइनेंशियल इंक्लूजन आधार डिजिटल आइडेंटिटी फॉर डूइंग दी के वाई सी एंड मोबाइल फॉर ट्रांजेक्शन यू नो इंफॉर्मेशन इंफॉर्मेशन कम्युनिकेशन सो दिस जैम ट्रिनिटी वी वर एबल टू ओपन फोर हंड्रेड मिलियन बैंक अकाउंट इन फोर हंड्रेड डेज दैट्स द स्केल दैट्स द स्पीड एट विच वी ओपन दीज अकाउंट एंड टूडे इंडिया इज द ओनली कंट्री वेयर वी ट्रांसफर्ड something like 45 billion dollars i mean i don't remember the figure 4.2 billion or 40 42 billion dollars in the uh, in the accounts directly of the of the farmers or the poor people you know construction workers and various type of people you know because we did not have the freedom to go out from our houses during the covid period initially if you remember lockdown still we were able to transfer that money the technology has enabled all that to happen and i believe there's these you know kind of components covin for example is now being repurposed and has been repurposed for universal vaccination so basically we will be able to remind the parents of every child that you know this is the first dose of polio second dose is due now go to the nearest place stuff like that so we created those artifacts which have now become universal and which have now been used by various you know domains and i think public sector undertakings can also use many of these artifacts and the basic philosophy of not building monolithic applications and building components reusable components which can be plugged into all kinds of applications is what is required basically by every organization so that you know you don't require ki bhai जब तक सारा का सारा कंप्यूटराइज नहीं हो जाएगा तब तक मेरा कुछ निकलेगा ही नहीं उसमें से दैट शुड नॉट हैपन यू शुड यूज दोज रीयूजेबल कॉम्पोनेंट एंड बेक मेक यू नो थिंग्स हैपन सो वॉट वी हैव टू रिमेंबर इज दैट वी नीड टू इनोवेट वी नीड टू क्रिएट न्यू एंड एंड आई कैन टेल यू एटलीस्ट इन गवर्नेंस यू नो आई फाइंड दैट इन ए मेनी स्टेट्स मेनी सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट यू विल नॉट बिलीव in 2014 i had called the secretary of civil aviation the then secretary of civil aviation the then security fellows the civil aviation security there is one wing and uh, immigration fellows and many other uh, persons and i had said why don't you create a express way for aadhar holders what you have digi yatra today friends we had said 10 years back there is a record in the you know department of electronics and it at that time everybody said ani ni ye to security lapse ho jayega are humne kaha bhai saab security lapse aaj aapka ho raha hai koi bhi aadmi passenger nahi hai fir bhi wo ticket bana ke print karke chala aayega aapka ghusa dega aadmi usko you know this is the more more robust system hum logon ne like sales person i used to go to the department of telecom and say use aadhar for you know mobile sim this thing kyc for mobile sims the various outfits were saying nahi 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 ye to bahut bekar hai bhai mobile humko place uska address ka kya pata hai address is a self declared you know thing to aadmi jo hai wo kolkata mein na reh ke bombay mein reh raha hai to humne ka bhai saab bombay mein reh raha hai kolkata mein usse kya farak padta hai once you have got hold of the aadmi then it doesn't make a difference yaar india is a very mobile population how does it once you have place of once you have the person's identity captured how does it matter kunti putra arjun wo kunti putra isliye kaha gaya ki jisse ki unko identify kiya there may be many other arjuns also so once you have identified the guy and identified with his biometrics <laughs> you know you have nothing to nothing else to look for and now they are all you know using mr mukesh ambani reliance jio they made 100 million customers in in 100 days they were making 1 million customers using electronic kyc of aadhar this basically gives you how many mobile sims have been issued in your name otherwise mai mere naam pe kitni mobile sim issue ho gayi mujhe pata hi nahi hai technology basically provides that kind of 
you know, robustness in, in these things. And I think what is required is we need to use technology wherever there is an opportunity, we must use that. And that I think is the, is the, is the basic, you know, at least I am convinced the Prime Minister talked of presenceless, cashless, and paperless governance. And this is what we have enabled. We have enabled presenceless, cashless, paperless governance. And I think we need to use more and more of, of this. Just wanted to share a few thoughts. I'm not sure whether it is relevant for today's lecture or not, but you know, I spoke what I knew about. Thank you very much.